Hello everyone and welcome to the first edition of the Trade Wrap with the free agency open today on the Friday, the very first day of the trade period, or well, sorry, of the free agency period. And we had just the one official trade or free agency moved put through today and it's now confirmed he's a Hawthorne player officially, Carl Amon, the former Boilet player, as the unrestricted free agent has joined the Hawthorne Football Club on a four-year deal as Carl Amon. And as combo pick, quite a late, I've got pick 22nd, which is a, a pick 27, which is a second round of compensation pick for Carl Amon. It's about right. It, you just got to keep in mind, guys and girls, it goes through to the pick after your pick in a certain round, which probably lays would have been 26. So, therefore, it's now 27. So, um, yeah, that's a good move for the Hawks. I like the move. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the list of names as well. Uh, that could be happening in the next few weeks. So let's get stuck into that. But first, just off the top, as I just mentioned, Carl Amon, officially a Hawk on a four-year deal. Now, I'm going to mention some other names that uh, either have re-signed or some updates on some players as well. The big news um, was first broken to supposedly to be official on Thursday, was it Thursday or Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday afternoon at about 4 o'clock withdrawing time, there was a report on Channel 7 Melbourne News by Andrew McCormack, who said Collingwood star Jordan DeGarry re-signs long-term deal with the Pies. And not a word was said. Not a word was said on their own network at the 6pm bulletin. Their own journos, Fox journos, Channel 9 journos, The Age journos, nothing. Herald Sun, nothing. Not a single word. And the hours went by. I thought, this is very odd. Seven never posted that Twitter clip, and I thought it's a pretty big deal. And they did not post about it, which I found very, very odd. Andrew McCormack didn't tweet about it, nothing. They normally, Channel 7 News Melbourne Twitter page, always post every single story, whether it's news, sport, or even weather. Weather. And they did not bring up that. So I found it very, very odd. I thought, hmm, is this guy, Andrew McCormack, jumped the gun? I think he may have maybe right in the end. That he may have jumped the gun. So we went on and had a look. Nothing the whole night, but not one journal. Then we go to Thursday morning. Not a damn word. Then St. Kilda list boss James Gallagher was on John Trade Raider. We'll get to outside of the Degoe stuff, what he spoke about in a second. Um, but if that, he said they were still in the mix, yada, yada, yada. And then Josh Galbalich, who interviewed him with Sarah Rolly, fellow person who's been on my podcast. It's going well, Sarah. Um, we have Josh, and once the interview was under gags, he said there was still in the ch uh, chance have to find in the next few days, which obviously they did, but not to the way the Saints would have wanted, obviously. Um, and then, yeah, he was still not signed at the Collingwood. And St Kilda said they had not been told. And Josh Galbalich, at the end of the James Gallagher interview, instantly said he spoke to Collingwood and to go his manager, which was Ryan Hagg, his, his brother-in-law, and nothing had been signed at Collingwood. He had not made up his mind. Then we fast forward to Thursday night. Tommy Brown, now his dad, Jeff Brown, is the president of the Collingwood. So I got, how would I say it? Pretty confident. Well, not conf not like I know it's happening. But in my mind, I thought, hey, gee, it really must be happening. And he said that St Kilda's a firm favourite Tom Brown. That did not happen. And Friday morning, you see the news that um, Geordie Degoe is signed with the five-year deal with the Pies. His manager, his brother-in-law, Ryan ha Haig, was on... Trade Radio, and he said that Jordy to go he made up his mind very, very late on Thursday night. So no matter, technically Ryan, oh sorry, Ryan Hagen was correct, he's his manager, but Andrew McCormack, the Channel 7 news reporter, jumped the gun. He may have been right in the end, but he jumped the gun, and it was confirmed by Pete Ryan of The Age today, officially, that Jordan Degoe has signed a five-year deal with the Pies, and then Collingwood confirmed it about half an hour after. So congratulations to Jordy. Saints, unfortunately, don't get their man, and they've got to keep on going. Well, you could have gone for Griffin Logue, Carl Amon, Lloyd Meek, and co. But, yeah, you missed out yet again. And so that's the big news of the last 24 hours with Carl Amon officially being a Hawk. So we'll go through some more names. The Jack Bowes scenario is interesting. Golgo said, very good reasons, too, on Trade Raider was Craig Cameron, their list manager, and he outlawed that on their... Website, which I wish they could we actually give a download because they're dead and quiet at the moment, not giving us anything. It's a club for the fans and members on their own website. Um, like their own videos, like the Gold Coast, they did, and Hawthorne and a few other clubs have done. 
Um, and that was, they go to strategy reason why they're now pre-playing all the way back in 2018 or 19, whenever they lost Tom Lynch and Stephen May, they said it had a plan, they had to spend a certain amount of their salary cap, and now they're trying to clear that money out more to in a few, next year and the year after, they have enough money to go for big name free agents of the big name value, not the Levi Casbolt and brand analysis of the world, the higher up names. So... They'll be in a position in a year's time once Bose and Fiorini and players like that are out of their cap space. They'll have enough space to do it. And it's the right move to do. It's not the strongest draft. They don't need more draft picks. So that's why they're comparing Bose with pick seven, get that money out, give the club a benefit for taking their big money from and get something cheap in return. And then, yeah, so Craig Cameron listed it well on trade. Go have a listen to it. Didn't hear it. Or go check the version, the full version on their website as well. It was very... Good and good listen to to what to do. So if people are saying they're dumb for doing it, you have no idea. Go listen to what Craig Cameron said. They're list boss on Trade Radio or their website, and you'll know why. Speaking of Jack Bowes, the Hawks list manager Mark McKenzie just recently on Trade Radio today, and he did say they do have an interest in check Jack Bowes and pick seven. They see him as a mid, which is the way he wants to play. But he hasn't heard anything, obviously, as no one has yet from Jack Bowes. He's just come back from overseas. He'll make up his mind probably early next week. So you've got Hawthorne, St Kilda, Geelong, and Essendon in the mix. So one of those four clubs likely, or North Melbourne. I don't see Brisbane. He wants to go to, ideally to Victoria. Uh, in Brisbane, he wouldn't, he'd be in the same position as a Gold Coast, in and out or out. In, well, when he didn't have the injuries, he was in and out. So, um, oh, this year he was. So, no, I see the Suns. Oh, I see Jack Burrows picking one of the four Victorian clubs. I just, or five, if, if you include North Melbourne. Um, so that's the one that came... No, no, an eye out on, um, where are we? Uh, uh, where are we? I'm just going to go through the most recent ones. I'm just trying to look at my list here. Um, where are we? Uh, Ollie Henry, yes, today has officially requested a trade to the Geelong Football Club from Jay Clark. Yeah, an interesting one. Um, another player that Geelong will have to pay up for, same with Tanner Bruin, who requested them last week. The Giant, former top one former round one pick like Lolly Henry. So Geelong, you're going to have to cough up. You're going to have to absolutely cough up. Cough up. Cough up. If they can get somebody to check Burrows and pick seven, no, pretend they're on the premiership, that'd be great on their part and smart and logical. But from the other clubs, I'd be questioning why the hell you did not even do anything good enough to get that deal done. Don't give me the cap space because Geelong have got, haven't got any space available pretty much. So if they can get it done, anyone can get it done. So be smart about it. So yeah, Tanner Bruin, Ollie Henry there. Um, we're just trying to look some other names. Matt Crouch, the Adelaide list manager, um, Justin Reid was on today on Trade Radio as well. And he did say that Matt Crouch is not for sale. Um, I'm sure if a suitor came, he would. But yeah, they just say that at the moment. Mark McKenzie, the Hawthorne list boss about Tom Mitchell, did say that um, nothing's certain at the moment. Uh, he's a quiet player, yada, yada, yada. I think he's just playing it up because when he does end up probably requesting it to Collingwood, um, he trying to keep their barking power up. And I can understand why he's saying it now. Because if he does say, oh, yeah, no, he's not worth that. I mean, he's, yeah, we're letting him go. Then that diminishes their value for what they can expect then for Tom Mitchell, even though he's in contract by playing it down. So I can understand why he's doing it. But he's going to leave Hawthorne and very likely to the Pies. Brandon Fiorini will go to the Pies. Um, Billy Frampton will go to the Pies. Dan McStay is managing negation, who I've had on my podcast also. The world's worst kept secret, Dan McStay, will be done through a forensic trade on Monday, more than likely, did his managing negation say. Um, Dan McStay's going on overseas for a month on Sunday. Uh, where else have we got here? So going back to the St. Kilda Hunter, Clark, James Yellow, the list boss, said yesterday that uh, he is not for trade. Um, he's a talented player. We haven't seen the best of him so far because of injuries and whatnot. Um, so he's a required player. He didn't say required player, but he said he's well respected. Yada yada yada. We expect him to stay. He didn't say no, not happening. You know how the definitive. He was not definitive. He was saying he's not leaving, but he didn't sound as definitive. So it just up in the end. He says we'll chat to him when he gets back. Why do you need to chat to him when he gets back if he's got two years to go, which he does? Very odd. Sorry, one year to go. Very odd. You know people are going to crack it if he leaves. Brad Hill, someone that doesn't look like he's leaving. 
with the Clarko question mark. Brad Hill was probably only going for Clarko, so we don't know with that, obviously. Um, so Clark, um, Brad Hill, well, Brad, James Gallagher says, will more likely stay sane. He's more definitive of him than he was of Clark, which is uh, annoying, to be honest, because he should be gone. He hasn't been good for us at all. A few good patches here and there. Uh, a delisted Frio player, Connor Blakey, has some interest in the Gold Coast Suns, as reporting by, just now by Ryan Daniels of Seventh Perth. The only reliable Perth journo there is is Ryan Daniels. Um, yeah, and what else have we got? Um, uh, before we go to any other non trade news, I just want to go through here some of the list of names. Um, Brody Grundy, you can speak that earlier. You get down to Melbourne. Rankin will go to Crows. Again, Justin Reed, their list boss the Crows. So it'll be pretty good. And Craig Cameron says they want to be compensated well, and so they should. Uh, Toronto and Hopper, that'll get done. Well, Toronto will. Hopper, likely, but Jeter has got to cough up. Some of the geeks on trade rares and some dumb suggestions. One guy said, I think I remember which, oh, Brendan Sanderson said, pick 12, 27, 30 is enough for Toronto and Hopper. Are you serious? Toronto's worth two first, and Hopper's contracted and was offered seven years. So that's almost the same value as well. So 12, 27, and 30 ain't going to get it done, sand out. Luke Jackson, you'll get to Freo. Rory Lobb wants to go to the Bulldogs. We'll see what happens there. Josh Dunkley will get to Brisbane. We mentioned Damon Sager to Collingwood. Bobby Hill will go to Collingwood. Ben Long will go to the Gold Coast. Both clubs are in discussions, discussions there. And interesting, St. Kilda's did say too with Ben Long, they have discussed players as well. So does that, the Jack Bowes, now that Dugowie's st staying with the Pies, that conversation could be brought back open. I wouldn't be surprised if it is back open, if it was never closed, if, if you go what John Ralph said. He says it was close. Lloyd Meek. Hawthorne, did you say Mark McKenzie? They're interested in him, but it's up to Freo. You didn't sound too convincing as convincing for a player that reportedly wants to go to your club. I think it must be that his preference is Hawthorne, but he hasn't, doesn't want to say definitively. So Lloyd Meek is a chance to still get to the Hawks. Interesting choice, though, if that's the case. Uh, Jack Gunson, free agency moved yesterday. Picked the lines officially. Uh, yeah, I could, could have told you that a few weeks ago, or months ago that was happening. Um, Blake Akers, probably a future third rounder for Blake Akers to join Carlton from Freo. Great player, Blake Akers, very underrated. Pick three, uh, round three, future third rounder, which could be picking the 60s, 50s, 50, 60s, is an absolute, or 50s, is an absolute steal for Blakey Akers on a three year deal. Uh, Jack Bytel, I exclusively revealed last night, late last night, that he wants to stay at the Saints, he's happy there. He's likely to get a one-year offer, but he'll probably have to wait to the end of the trade period. It's not guaranteed. Jared Leanett is out of contract too. He better get another year. Uh, Toby Bedford has met with GWS in the f this week. He's assessing his options. Reportedly got a three-year deal from Melbourne. Uh, but he's weighing up GWS probably for more game time. If he's been offered two years at GWS, I think he might take that over Melbourne's three because he's probably guaranteed a bit more. Not guaranteed, but more than likely get a game at GWS. It's a small foot alongside Toby Green. Two Tobys, eh? And then you got it, Tom Green. The Greens and the Tobies. <laughs> Junior Rioli, there's a standoff there with both clubs. Apparently, Ryan Dennis is saying pick 27 from the Amon Compo, Port of Offer for Rioli, and West Coast aren't happy with that. Now, you hear clubs doing these type of deals going, no, 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 no. But I think it eventually will get done. That's pretty much a wrap for the day one of the fantasy. The trades officially open 9 a.m. on Monday. Weekends don't count. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Trades for next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, following Monday and Tuesday. And then the Wednesday night, I will finish on the Extravaganza show at 7.30. I have a daily wrap from Monday onwards, excluding the weekends. I'll have a wrap for you guys. But if there's any news to break, there's one way to check, and that's on AFL Information, Trade Rumors, and Results on Facebook. He's right on here on the YouTube channel, same name. Subscribe to the channel already. Like the video, everything like that. Share it to your friends. Purchase the merch, everything like that. Greatly appreciate that. Now... Some quick news to finish off. It's been a news day the last day and a bit. Brad Scott is a new coach of the Bombers. Four-year deal, says Tommy Brown. So, uh, good move for the Bombers. I don't mind the move out of all the options. Better than Hurd, who's a uh, Brendan Lade and all the carousel and all the names that were mentioned over the last month. Heard everyone like that. Brad Scott was the best choice for me out of all those lists of names. Tommy Papley signed a five-year extension. It's great for them. It's essentially, people going to me, oh, it's six years. No, we already had a year to go, so it's five, one plus five. So a new extension, five-year extension on top of the one you already had. Thank you very much. If you like these videos, please let me know. Send off in the comment section below. Like, subscribe to the channel. 
Go tell people to subscribe to the channel. The only place to get your daily news of all clubs relating to the trades and anything else. There's only one place to go, and it's right here on YouTube. AFL information, trade rumors, and results. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell for all notifications, daily videos for the next two and a half weeks. Then we'll have draft coverage for a lot of that time in November, to the end of November, and probably some videos in December. And any interviews I get in the future. With some positive talks in the last few days, so hopefully I can announce them in due course. Thank you all. Until the next video, take care.